Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today's question is really a conversation that I heard from actually my little brother when he was talking about something that he heard at a conference. So he brought it actually to my attention. He said, hey Thomas, you're involved in Big Data. I was talking to some folks at a uh, GIS conference around Hadoop and TensorFlow and he's like, one person came up to me and said, Ah, Hadoop's dead. It's all TensorFlow now. So I really wanted to take today to really talk about the differences between Hadoop and TensorFlow and just kind of do a level set for all data engineers out there, you know, all big data developers or people that are just interested in finding out, okay, what, what's happening in the marketplace? So today's question is going to come in around TensorFlow versus Hadoop and find out all the things that we need to know from a data engineering perspective. And even in the end, we'll talk about which one's going to be around in five years. So find out more right after this. All right, so welcome back. So today, as promised, what we're going to do is we're going to tackle the question around which is better, what's the differences of TensorFlow versus Hadoop, where does it fit in data analytics, the marketplace, you know, in solving the world's problems. Because, I mean, you know, if you're watching this channel and you're invested in the data analytics community, you know how we feel about it and we're passionate about we're being able to solve problems using data. So first thing we're gonna do is break them down. And then at the end, we're gonna talk about some of the differences, where we see the market going, and which one is gonna make it in five years. Or will both, who knows? So first, what is TensorFlow? So we've talked about it a good bit on this channel, but TensorFlow is a framework to do deep learning. So deep learning gives you the ability to, you know, it's a subset and a branch of machine learning, but it's just about processing data. The really cool thing about TensorFlow and the reason that TensorFlow and frameworks similar to TensorFlow in the deep learning realm are so awesome is because it gives you the portability to run and analyze your data on your local machine or even spread it out in a distributed environment. It comes with a lot of different algorithms and neural networks that you can use and incorporate into solving problems. Um, one of the cool things about deep learning is just the ability to actually look and analyze more video data or voice recognition, right? Or, you know, if you're going on Instagram or if you're going on YouTube and you're looking for examples on deep learning, chances are somebody's going to build some kind of video or some kind of uh, photo identification that will help you identify a cat, right? So, you know, that's the classic example that you'll see is, hey, can we, can we detect a cat by feeding in data and looking and analyzing this? So TensorFlow uses, doesn't use to do, but TensorFlow uses big data. So you use these large data sets to train your models that can be used on edge devices, right? So if you've ever used a drone or if you've ever used a remote control to use you know, natural language processing to change the channel, then you've used some portion of deep learning or natural language processing and not saying it's TensorFlow, but that's what TensorFlow it really does, right? It's very popular, developed by Google, open sourced and housed by Google. A lot of free resources out there. And you know, for data scientists and machine learning engineers, it's a very, very exciting pro product to be able to build out and be able to start analyzing your data quicker and in a very popular fashion. So couple together the excitement for deep learning and couple together the ease of use of TensorFlow. And that's why the market has just been hot for TensorFlow and those other frameworks. So what is Hadoop? So Hadoop, you know, it's all about elephants, right? So Hadoop has really been around since, I don't know, I guess we're probably in 12 to 13 years of it being open source. But, you know, if we think back to what we did from uh, analyzing data that was coming in from, you know, the web, right? So think about being able to index the entire web it's kind of what Google, you know, Google, Google helped develop that and Yahoo and a lot of the other teams from Cloudera and Hortonworks really helped to push Hadoop into the open source arena. So Hadoop is synonymous with saying big data. So you can't say big data without thinking about Hadoop. So Hadoop's been around for a long time. There's a lot of different components to Hadoop. And even, you know, on this channel, whenever we talk about Hadoop, we're specifically really talking about the ecosystem, right? Like the ability to process data, but the ability to also store large amounts of data with HDFS. So the Hadoop distributed file system. Um, so there's a lot of components in there. There is, you know, there are APIs and there are other tools that help for you to do it. But one of the things that I really like to think about when we talk about Hadoop and why it was so record breaking and just, you know, really, really kind of opened the market for big data was just the ability to set up distributed systems and be able to analyze large amounts of data. 
And so this large amounts of data would be more in the unstructured data. So think of it not being in a database and but a lot of it will still be in text based, right? So you could go out there, you know, very popular example is going out there, setting up an API to pull in um, Twitter data and be able to do sentiment analysis over that. So not so much the deep learning. So they're trying to get into the deep learning area right now, but more of machine learning, right? Like using algorithms like singular value decomposition or K nearest neighbor, but being able to do that over large sets of data, right? Large sets of data with multiple machines. So, you know, Hadoop been around for a while, more seen kind of as replacing the enterprise data warehouse, but you know, with TensorFlow now on the scene, kind of where does Hadoop fit in and what's going on and what are some of the differences? So Hadoop was written in Java, TensorFlow was written in C++, right? Both of them have APIs that give you the ability to, you know, whenever we're talking about the processing of data, um, you can do it in Java, you can do it in uh, Python, you can do it in Scala. There's a lot of different options there from a Hadoop perspective. And TensorFlow too, you know, you can see C++, um, you can also see it in um, Python. Python's really one of the more popular ones. I actually did a course using TFLearn and TensorFlow to kind of show that. But when we think about the tools, it's a little bit different, right? When we think about Hadoop, we're actually building out a distributed system, right? And then we're using things like maybe Spark, right? So think of using Spark to be able to analyze that data, right? So we're gonna we're gonna pull insights from that data back to our sentiment analysis that's gonna say, hey, you know, these specific words in here, when we see them, this tweet is unhappy or this tweet is happy. Versus, you know, TensorFlow, same thing, more of a processing engine, right? Like uh, frame, framework to be able to pull in, analyze the data and give you insights on whether that image contained a cat or not a cat. So you're starting to see some of the differences we talked about, you know, Python versus Java. Both of them, you know, there, there's different APIs that you can start to use those. And I'm probably talking right now about saying that, you know, I haven't seen a lot of Java and TensorFlow, but I'm sure somebody has an API or some kind of framework out there that works on it. So. Um, another big difference, too, is the way that the processing is done. So the Hadoop ecosystem is really trying to get into it right now. But from a TensorFlow perspective, we're really seeing it on GPUs, right? So think of being able to use GPUs to process data, you know, 10, 20, you know, a lot faster than what we'd see on a CPU, where Hadoop is more CPU based. But then we're, you know, the, the, the way that we're solving problems with Hadoop is we're throwing a lot of CPUs in a distributed model to process the data and then pull it back in. TensorFlow, same thing, distributed distributed networks. You know, as, as you start to scale out your data, you really need to distribute those systems, but we're doing it with GPUs, right? And that's speeding up the process. So, you know, a little bit of a difference there just in the, the, the approach, but that's one of the big key differences. So for a data engineer and we're evaluating these, kind of where do they come in? So ease of use. Um, so Hadoop, you know, you're building out a distributed system, really, really Java based. So if you have a Java background, it's really good, but you can you can get by without without it in some areas. Um, but, you know, it's it's really not so much of a comparison with the ease of use. But if we're talking about, you know, just being able to stand something up and start start messing around with it, it's, it's going to be a little bit more complicated and harder to do it from a Hadoop perspective with you know, TensorFlow, you, you can actually look at an NFS file system, right? Like you can you can feed in data from different file systems where with Hadoop, you know, you're building that system out and also building out a file system. You're building out distributed systems and you're building out disaster recovery and some of the other components. So it's harder to do from a Hadoop perspective, but there's more expertise in it because you're actually building out a whole solution set versus TensorFlow is the processing system that you're using. So the comparison on, on that perspective, if somebody tries to talk to you about that, you know, to kind of explain that it's these, these are two different systems, right? So, you know, when we're talking about it, which are we using? I mean, that's that's really comes down to it. So, you know, if you're looking for a project and somebody says, hey, should we use TensorFlow here or Hadoop? Um, it's going to be pretty easy to spot those, I think, because when you're starting to look at them, if you think of Hadoop, think of something that's kind of replacing or kind of falling in line to the um, enterprise data warehouse, right? Like, what are we, what are we doing? Do we have massive amounts of data uh, that could be structured, semi-structured, but you know, you're wanting to offload and you're wanting to run huge analytics uh, over, over that processing, then that's probably gonna be a Hadoop perspective, right? We're, we're probably building out that system when we think of the traditional enterprise data warehouse, that's the bucket that we're gonna fall in. Now, if we're talking about doing some sort of artificial intelligence or doing some things with deep learning, um, maybe not so much in the machine learning era, uh, you're going to want to look at uh, TensorFlow and especially look, listen for keywords like, hey, you know, what are we doing from the perspective of images or video or voice, right? So any, any of those media rich types 
of data, then you're probably going to use TensorFlow too. Um, if you have machine learning engineers and data scientists, and like I said, if you're trying to do rich media, TensorFlow is going to be a really popular one. Um, if you have more data analysts, um, and even, you know, and even your data scientists, but from the perspective of we're looking at large amounts of data and wanting to marry it, but you know, we have it in some kind of structure and some kind of standardized system, then Hadoop may be your bucket. So which one of these is going to be around in five years? I think they'll both be around. Um, but I, I will say that the popularity for Hadoop will continue uh, in, in, in some degrees, but it's more continuing to replace that enterprise data warehouse, right? So think of, you know, what you do from a traditional perspective in, you know, holding, you know, holding all your company's information from that perspective, where we're seeing more pop product development, more media rich things that are being done from an artificial intelligence we'll see more TensorFlow there. So um, will TensorFlow still be the number one deep learning framework in five years? Will deep learning, I, I can't answer that here. Um, would I learn it if I were, you know, just starting out as a data engineer? Yeah, definitely. Um, but definitely from the perspective of, you know, I wanna learn how to implement it and how to use it. So you don't have to become an expert, right? We're not trying to become a data scientist from that perspective, but start looking at some of the frameworks and building out, going through some of the simple examples that they have. Um, and then heavy, you know, heavy use on Docker container and that whole world and being able to build those out. And that'll help you if you're really trying to look into, hey, what could be next for data engineers or what's going on now? Uh, what's cutting edge from that perspective? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you have any comments on it, if I missed something, put it in the comment section here below. I'm always, always happy to carry on the discussion. But until next time, see you again on Big Data, Big Questions.